question will be Kurt on the front row. I know you talked about Alex last week and the, the touchback stat, but that may have been just in terms of impact, the, the biggest game of his career. What do you say about his role in kind of the hidden yardage that went into his, the, the game Saturday? Uh, you know, I thought Alex Alex did a great job in the game. And, um, you know, on the road, uh, good opponent, good defense, um, you know, field position in that battle of, of hidden yardage and, and the field position battle that we talk about, um, you know, being able to establish that early in the game uh, and then really maintain that throughout the first half. You know, I, I thought he did an excellent job. I thought our cover guys did a great job getting down. Um, you know, I think there was there was three punts that, that ended up inside the 10, um, you know, and, and for us to be able to create that kind of field position for our defense and then ultimately set up field position for our offense, it was critical. And um, I can't say enough good things about just the way he's performed, um, and, and especially in those situations. You know, to, I was I was a little worried that I might have jinxed him last week when I said he hadn't had a uh, hadn't had a touchback since his first game, but um, he was able to come through really big in in, in that game the other day. Coach, sticking with Alex, where, where have you seen him grow the most since he's arrived on campus? Uh, you know, I, I think just his overall um, awareness when it comes to in-game uh, thoughts and adjustments. You know, last year everything was so brand new to him, and and uh, just the game day atmosphere itself was just such a new uh, experience and environment for him. And now he'll come to me, and you know, based off where we are situationally in the game, or or where the field position is um, and, and have thoughts about what punt he wants to hit, whether he wants to try to hit a spiral that goes over the guy's head or whether he wants to try to just hang it up there at about 40 yards and, and let our guys go down. He'll, we'll have those conversations. And uh, you know, a year ago, I don't think he understood um, as much what his impact and role on games was. He was just out there to, to punt the ball to the best of his ability. Now I think he strategically understands uh, a lot more of what we're trying to accomplish, which obviously makes him a, a better player and more of a weapon for us. On the other side of those punts, um, how much pride are those coverage guys taking in, in being the guy to, to make sure it doesn't go into the end zone? A tremendous amount, you know, to be honest. The, the guys, um, you know, I don't know if this gets noticed, but like Pokey stays on the field in those sky situations, which is really the only time he plays that gunner role. Um, and as a matter of fact, on the one that he caught at the one yard line, we made eye contact as as that third down was transitioning to fourth down. And I could tell he was pretty gassed from running a route the play before. And you know, I said, "Hey, man, I, I need one play from you, dog." And he said, "I got you," and uh, went in there and made a made a heck of a play. And uh, you know, those guys take a lot of pride in that. Um, we work it every single week. Um, you know, I think that they understand the significance and importance of the role. And, and I think the cover guys in general on that punt unit take a lot of pride. You know, Ja'Kai Douglas, um, you know, I don't think there's a stat for it, but I think he's probably forced more fair catches from, from an opponent than, than anyone I can remember in terms of uh, consistently running down on punt cover. And, you know, there's a lot of guys that have done a great job with that. And um, obviously that needs to continue this week. Coach, in this day and age, is it a luxury when you have two defensive ends that can get after the quarterback, or is it a necessity to be able to only rush four and pressure a quarterback? Well, I mean, it's, I think it's probably both. You know, I mean, it's great to have two guys that can do it. And um, in this day and age, to play defense, the style in which we play defense, um, it is a necessity uh, because we don't run a lot of third down pressure, and we're, we're more of a coverage team right now because that's the way we're structured. Um, and to be able to create pressure with your front four is extremely critical. And uh, you know we play with a lot of two high safeties in the run game, and that puts stress on on the front to make sure that they're doing a great job of of creating knockback at the line of scrimmage and and uh, securing their gaps. And and you know our guys have have really, I think they've embraced that challenge. Um, you know there's a lot of times that that I'll go in. Uh, on a Wednesday or a Thursday, and, and say, "Hey, listen, here's the plan on third down. It's on you." Um, there's no schemed up pressures. There's no no all kinds of things that, that coaches. We can come up with all those things, but right now that doesn't play to the strength of what we are. And um, you know, if you can establish a pass rush with four guys, um, it creates a lot of opportunity on the back end to change your coverages up. Um, you know, the more you have to pressure, the more limited you are in your coverage options. And um, you know, I think our ability to establish that pass rush has been critical. Uh, where did things go wrong on that long kick return they had? 
Yeah, so on the long kick return, you know, I don't love the call in hindsight. You know, we went deep right uh, into a little bit of a crosswind, but the two deep rights that we had gone with previously were ended up being good kicks for us. So I felt comfortable with, with the call at the time. But just looking back at it in hindsight, uh, probably could have given um, um, Parker an opportunity to just try to bang it out of the end zone, but we hadn't been doing that. So, um, you know, we, we were a little bit misfit uh, with, with – how our lane distribution should have been run down the field, um, and and that can't happen. You know, you, we got to make sure that um, you know everybody has a sp specific landmark they need to hit. Uh, the reason for that is to make sure that our distribution is the way it needs to be. And uh, on that particular one, we misfit about a, a landmark over and, and end up hitting. We'll go to Kurt on the front row. After the uh, the start to the season the team had, I guess, what's it mean, the, the response they've shown to now being in a position for where a bowl berth is on the line this weekend? Well, I, you know, I think, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, I've been really blessed and, and very lucky in my career to, to be on a lot of teams that have been really good. Um, but I, I think I may have learned more and grown as much as any other year in this year, personally, just from working with this group of guys, um, players and coaches. Um, it's a group that uh, has a tremendous amount of belief in, in what we're building as a program. It's a group that comes to work every single day, uh, regardless of circumstance. Um, and, and it's a group that, that has come together as the season's gone on. Um, and, I, and I think, it, you know, I've said this before, and, and I really believe this with, with everything. Um, it starts at the top of the organization. Um, the message from Coach Norvell did not change at 0-4, um, and it hasn't changed winning five of the last seven. Um, it's still about maximizing today, being the best that you can be today, and let tomorrow take care of itself. And then tomorrow we're going to try to be the very best we can be and stack those days on top of each other. And that puts you in a position to have a chance to be successful on Saturdays. And, um, you know, that's our approach this week. I, I don't think we've gotten to the point where we're doing any reflection on, on, you know, what the season is yet. Our focus is to put together the best Monday that we can to put a game plan together that our guys have a chance to be successful with, and then Tuesday, go practice. And, and that's been the focus. Um, and that's been the focus throughout. And I think that's what's allowed us to, to stay on track as the season's gone on. Uh, Kier had a really big game statistically with the sacks, but also the hits and hurries and everything else. Um, but after the game, when we talked to him, he, he sounded almost mad about the missed opportunities. Um, I don't, you did. You may not have even known him a year ago. How much have you enjoyed coaching him, and and how big of an impact has he had? Just his attitude. Um, oh, Kier is Kier is. Uh, I mean, he's had a. I mean, it's hard to, to quantify how significant his impact has really been on on not only the defensive front but the whole team in general. Um, he's a guy that that uh, everybody has respect for. Um, he's a guy that's physical. He works hard. Um, He's smart. He understands the game. He says the right things at the right time. And his frustration about maybe some of the things that he might have left on the field uh, is probably what drives him to be a really good player. Um, because, you know, I think in a lot of cases, it's easy to look at your successes and, and pat yourself a little bit on the back after the type of game that he, that he played. Um, but I think when he came into work on Sunday, um, he was as focused on some of the things that he may have left out there as he was uh, the things that he was, was really good at. And um, I think that's what's going to drive him to this week, you know, to, to make sure that he has whatever he feels like his best performance can be. And that doesn't always mean statistically you're going to have three or four sacks or whatever the, the case might be. It just means that he, I think he wants to put his best performance out there. And I think he's really aware of the clock is ticking. You know, I mean, um, you know, he's, he's a guy that I think has enjoyed every minute of being a Seminole and knows this is our last regular season game. And, and he's going to do everything he can in his power to make sure we get one more. How much does the production of both Jermaine and Kier and, you know, the defensive line in general help in recruiting, you know, in the high school ranks and even in the transfer portal? Uh, you know, that's an interesting question. You know, I obviously use all the information, um, you know, with every guy that, that we're recruiting in terms of the production that we've been able to have at defensive end and um, how that's a featured position within our, our defense. And I believe this in recruiting and, and whether you're talking about recruiting a high school athlete or recruiting a transfer athlete, um, actions always uh, speak louder than words. And in recruiting, a lot of people are going to sell a lot of different things. Um, but 
if we can present that, you know, this actually happened. Like we brought two guys in out of the portal and this is exactly how we said it was going to happen and then it happened. And that's a, that's a tribute to their hard work and, and their great play. Um, but I do think it opens up eyes for people that could be looking at Florida State as a, as a potential home, whether that's as a high school player or as a transfer, um, because it's, it's played out exactly how we thought it'd play out. So I do think it's critical. Um, how much every recruit pays attention to people's statistical success, I'm not, I'm not sure on that. But um, I certainly use every piece of it that I can. Both of their quarterbacks have had a lot of success running. Um, what kind of pressure does that put on the ends and the defensive line in general? Well, you know, I, th I think the stress that any any mobile quarterback puts on your front is uh, the discipline and the responsibility that's necessary to play good against uh, an athletic quarterback. Um, you know, you can be a little bit more aggressive, uh, probably take a few more chances uh, when you're playing a, a non-mobile quarterback. Um, but when you are playing against a guy that's looking to get out of the pocket and, and break it and go and or have designed quarterback run game, um, you have to be disciplined. And uh, you know that that's going to be the challenge this week. Uh, make sure that we maintain great rush lanes, uh, and that's going to take all four guys to do it. And then um, that we also play discipline in the design quarterback run game because obviously that's a huge piece of their offense. All right. Are we going to do it again? Yeah, sure. We could. I went on. Right. It's Thanksgiving weekend. Thursday at the Papuchas household. Is it turkey or ham? It's absolutely turkey, but it's both. It's uh, we got we got some. Uh, I'm I'm a big turkey guy, but we definitely have our uh, honey banked ham uh, coming whenever whenever we pick it up. But it's a, it's a big event. We got a lot of family that that comes into town every year. Um, I'm excited about it just because uh, last year COVID, just like everybody, you know, probably affected a lot of people getting together from a family perspective. But we got a lot of cousins and and grandparents and, and family that join us every year for Thanksgiving because we obviously can't travel because it's always during the season. So, um, you know, it, it's one of the times of the year that I look most forward to. As a matter of fact, people have already started rolling into the Papucha's house now. So um, it's a crowded house, but it's that's what it's about. It's family and, and um, you know, I'm excited that it's here. I was trying to make it funny. You got all sincere on me, Coach. I did. What, I, yeah. I, I, What's your favorite side dish? Oh, absolutely. Uh, my wife does... Um, uh, sweet potatoes with marshmallows on top. That's that's my deal. Okay, well that answers the last two questions. All right, I've had